So as proud as I am of what Achievement First uh, schools, teachers, and kids, most importantly, have accomplished, it's also clear, um, thanks to Common Core, and now that many of us have been at this for a long time, college persistence and, and long-term outcomes for kids, that there are still real gaps. Uh, and the achievement gap is, in fact, wider than we thought it was when we set out to do this work. Um, and it's really pushed us, I think one of the things that's characterized the charter movement, I hope always will, um, is this desire to get better uh, and to pursue real excellence. And so we realized, especially in response to Common Core, that we had a certain path we were on that we would get incrementally better. We were reinvesting in teacher and leader training, we were enhancing our curriculum, and yet it still felt like that path wouldn't result in big enough change fast enough for kids. And I think one of the things about this work is the deep urgency that you're aware of whenever you look at um, a young person and realize that each year that clicks by, um, they either need to move closer to realizing their potential or their dreams are further away. And I think, so we set out to create, while doing aggressive continuous improvement, we created this separate headspace and organizational capacity to do a new design. Um, and there's something known as an ambidextrous organization, and we were trying to be that. Um, so 90% of our organizational effort stayed focused on the 32 schools and how to make them better. And we invested in a separate R&D team um, that went off on its own with a very clear, audacious charge to imagine a green field with nothing built on it and to, the best, to design the best school uh, they could think of. Um, to create the best prepared students in the world. Um, and that team, and I got to participate, it was a lot of fun, went on a journey, again, a fresh journey, similar to the one we did so many years ago, around the country and even looked at international best practices. And in addition to wanting to have better academic outcomes for students, we're still constantly trying to make sure, particularly the critical thinking and the writing skills and the deep understanding of math, to be sure we want the academics to be even better than what we're currently offering in what's now called Achievement First Classic. Um, what we really wanted to, and, and are still trying to understand and to have a breakthrough around in Greenfield, is student motivation. Because as we've looked at our students over the long term, what, what differentiates once you get over a certain academic threshold, what differentiates uh, success from failure is how much the kids really want it for themselves and their own sense of purpose and then their um, non-cognitive skills or habits to persevere through those challenges. And they have to have enough jet fuel to want to do it and they have, then they have to have some very practical skills that we just haven't been as focused on. Um, and so we designed Greenfield to dial up student motivation and independence um, more than you would find in the classic setting. We're learning that the so far Greenfield is promising, but as with doing any new design, we've changed the schedule nine times <laughs> and it's still a work in progress. But I think the core intuition appears to be true, which is that when students are given, um, when they are allowed the space to do more of their own goal setting based on their own sense of purpose, and we have to help them uh, with a kind of personal narrative process to arrive at that, but their own sense of purpose, their own sense of goal setting on a yearly, monthly, weekly, daily basis. When they set goals, they reflect on them, they track their progress, they make their plan, and then they revise it. And they do it in the context of a goal team, uh, a peers, a goal coach, an advisor who sticks with them for years, and then their dream team, which is their, not just their parent, but the, the new report card night has a student presenting to their dream team, which is their parent, their peers, their running partner, their goal coach, their pastor, their co football coach from outside of school, whoever it may be. Those ideas of putting the student more in the driver's seat, giving for the little guys more of a um, Montessori-like time of the day where they're doing their exploration for the older students where they have more self-directed learning and are able to work their way through their playlists. This whole thing appears to be the engine of greater student ownership over their own learning. I was recently at our Providence schools. Uh, just to give you the context, 
we went into the Oliver Perry School in South Providence, um, which is gorgeous old school building, very dominant, huge building, up on an incline, overlooking the community below, which is primarily public housing uh, at this point. And um, when we, before we had come in, when it was a traditional Providence public school, it had fallen into such disrepair that literally the front of the building was crumbling. So they had to close the front entrance and bring the kids in through the back. Um, eventually, because of a set of, you know, not just academic underperformance, but unfortunately violence um, leading to under-enrollment, where most families who could leave left, um, they decided to close the school. Uh, a few years later, with the support of the mayor, uh, who was supporting our coming into Providence um, and was part of, chair of our board, um, we went in there and we ended up investing money in the rehabilitation of the school. We reopened the front entrance and really kind of brought the building back to life, but of course, much more importantly than that, um, filled it with, with happy, smiling kids and a joyfully rigorous school experience. And I was just looking at the results of those schools, and we have 95% of the now kindergarten through second graders reading at grade level, um, almost 50% of them uh, more than a year ahead of grade level and there are 10 applications for every seat in that building. And it's just, it's now become such a dominant, desirable, powerful, positive part of that community.